What's up, I Like Scary? We are back. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm having an awesome day. It feels great to be a horror fan. So you guys, everyone talk about some Halloween ends news and some speculation. So, guys, we got some freaking news from David Gordon Green um, about Halloween ends uh, with a bloody disgusting article, you guys. And, um, you know, he kind of just stated, you know, something like this. Um, as we see in the article, he says... Lori Stroll has finally found herself in a better place. As for Michael, well, it sounds like we never really know where he's been. We don't really explain that, David Gordon Green tells the magazine. It's like, I don't want to see where Jaws goes to sleep at night when I'm watching a shark movie. I want to see him when he pops up and he got an appetite. Um, also, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis tells Total Film, on the other hand, by the time you meet Lori Strode, she has gotten help to process the level of violence that has been perpetuated against her and her family. She's done the work, and there's a moment at the beginning of the movie where you actually meet Lori. I'm not going to say she's innocent, as she's back when she was a 17-year-old girl, but she has a layer of hope about her. That's a beautiful place to start a really tragic, incredibly violent ending. So you guys, pretty much, I want to touch on first what David Gore Green said. Now this is crazy. Um, he's basically saying that with the four-year time jump, you guys, we possibly won't know where Michael Myers will be. It won't be explained. He will just pop back up after four years. Now, <clears> he, <throat> you know, he stated, I don't know where Jaws live. Uh, you know, do, I don't want to know where he lays his head. You know, it's a shark movie. So basically, I don't want to see Michael sleep or stuff like that. And it's kind of going pushing towards the Rob Zombie one. Now, we, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, they don't dig that how Michael, you know, he went about kind of like he was kind of human in a way, you know. Um, but that question is going to always be out there. What does Michael do on his off time? You know, now I, it's up. It's a lot of people that wants to hear that. Personally, I think Michael should, be, you know, should stay a mystery. Now, some stuff that should be kind of touched on a little bit. But on um, that, I understand why. Because it's like that is true. You know, he's he's the boogeyman. You don't want to know what he does. It's so going to kind of make him look human. Like it's going to humanize him in a way. Um, but so this is a speculation that I have for this. Um, you know, what David Gordon Green said, I've been talking about in past uh, speculation videos. So, you guys, we had David Gordon Green talking about in the past that a bulldozer would be in effect. Now, um, I, it can be a lot of things now, you guys. So, it's the, the, you know, this is called Cave Dweller or whatever, you guys. That's the name of this, uh, you know, film for the set and everything. Now, I'm not saying they're going to take the Myers house away, but it's a possibility that they take the Myers house away because Lonnie touched on it and kills. You know, if you line up Michael kills, you know, it lines up with the house. Everything, if you think about it, you guys, that um, everything that happened, you know, in, in this trilogy and everything was connected to the house, you know, except 2018, because 2018 was the, begin the, the beginning of the boogeyman coming back to Haddonfield and his journey on his way home. You have to kind of look at it. You know, he was on his way home. Um, when we get that scene with Hawkins and Zartanes in the police car, Michael was walking and hitting with the car. He, um, you know what I'm saying? He was on his way home. And people got to realize that, you know, 2018 and Kills is in the same night. It's just a long Halloween night. Now, he finally has made it home in Kills. And it's a, a person, you know, or um that lives there obviously is little john and big john who stay in the myers house um obviously they die and um karen stands in the window obviously she dies we get a flashback scene of hawkins accidentally killing his partner but michael was going to kill him anyways so it's like you know he killed judith in that window so it's like it's something with the house it's some type of attachment and um stuff like that now um i don't know if it will be something like that, you know, in 78, remember um, Tommy and Lori were walking across the street and, um, you know, he was like, that's the boogeyman's house. And, you know, she's walking and you can see the POV of Michael looking out at Tommy and Lori. Um, I don't think it's going to be something like that because um, I can only imagine, say, if Michael stays in the house for the, for, for, for the four-year time jump, um, that um, if he stays in the house for the four-year time jump, you know, people will start looking and checking on that house and everything. I'm pretty sure people probably even vandalize it. I don't even see anyone, you know, moving back in that house, to be honest. So, 
I had touched on the fact, you guys, in previous videos that what if, like, someone in the mob takes it upon herself to do something to the house, you know, kind of damage it, possibly bulldoze it, or maybe Lorey does it, because at the end of the day, it's like any situation that Michael's involved in in this trilogy, uh, you know, especially like coming towards the kills you know film it's like he he's he's around his house a lot you know um and it kind of shows a lot of kills that all he wants to do is go back home you know it's like he's like a kid all ki a kid knows his home and that's why he just stands in that window you remember they said maybe he's not looking out maybe he's looking in and it showed michael he's looking at himself so um it can be a lot of things going on with michael i feel like um but at, Say if they took the house away from him. This is what I was telling you guys. If they took the house away from him, he has nowhere to go. You know what I'm saying? So that's going to, you know, be a reason why he goes to the sewers. He goes to the sewers because, you know, he basically has nowhere to go. You know, his house is took from him. And um, I, I, I kind of touched on you guys. I had watched Resurrection a few weeks ago where, they, you know, Buster Rams like, you know, Michael's been living under this house for, you know, who knows how long and stuff like that. And, and I, I kind of thought about this idea saying that what if they take the house away from Michael and it's like a sword that's really under the house or something, you know, and he stays there. He may, it may be something like he has to be around in the area, you know, he stays there. Any look to, to, to just dive into it. Obviously, for the four, four years, Michael will be in this cave which is the sewers. He's going to be down there. He, you can see in the mask, it's molded over four years, and that's where he approaches Corey. Obviously, he chokes him out. So I think in the four years, we're going to get him in the cave. Um, I don't think it's going to be nothing like where they're kind of like going down there, and he's like, you know, it's showing what he does on his off time. I think they will kind of take the mystique away and, and the mystery of Michael. But I think, you know, the first time we see Michael will be when he grabs Corey because the way it's shot, you can just see his hand. And it's like, that's the boogeyman. It's just the way it's shot. They show straight hand, you know, in that trailer. So I think that it's going to be that. And then when, he, when you know, Corey sees him, it's going to be the shape. We get that rot and look on his face um, on, in his mask and everything. And um, and I think that's when we first see Michael. And, you know, I kind of threw that out there. That's when Michael takes out the bullies that chase Corey in a sewer. Because I'm thinking the bullies do chase Corey in a sewer and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. I mean, it's going to be questions out there about, you know, why does Michael go missing for four years and it's not explained but um maybe I explain it in a short term way um but i mean it's michael myers you know sometimes you know he leaves and he comes back you know but um i think that does because you got to think michael always wants to go home right every time you know the night he came home you know the boogeyman's coming he always wanted to go home since 78 and for some reason he just takes a four-year break and not come back you know what i'm saying it's like you guys listen that house might something might happen it might not even be no one we're thinking about maybe the city takes it down the city of how to feel decides to destroy it you know um or something like that or hey, someone just burns it you know throw a molotov or something or just burns at the ashes because they don't they just think the house is cursed and a lot of bad stuff been happening since you know 63 and 78 you know and, and i think that's what the, what the possibilities can be and, and michael can possibly just take it upon himself to just be in a cave of haddonfield um which is you know the source and um i think you know Corey's going to bring him back like i keep stating in videos i think that he's going to be one to bring michael back um now to kind of touch on something else you guys is just the 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 i'm so ready for halloween and so i'm so freaking excited to kind of touch on some pictures that you know total film um released now the first picture we get we get the shape michael myers you know after you know the four-year time jump he's in that that house with the colorful windows as we see has the knife he looks very scary. Now, this right here, in my opinion, it's just a strange James Jew. This is James Jew Courtney, you guys. As you look at it, this is James Jew. Um, he's in that house. And it's looking like a lot of stuff is going to take place in this house. Um, this can possibly be, you know, um, it could be a promotional image or it could possibly be when he comes to the house. Maybe it looks like possibly it could be a shot. Maybe Lori and Corey upstairs fighting. Maybe this is after he kills Corey and take his mask back, you guys. And um, now he's looking for Lori. Maybe we get a scene like Lori's hiding in the closet. You know, the hat tip to 78 or something like that. Um, but they're definitely aiming for a lot of, like, you know, fan service in this from what I'm seeing. But um, that is definitely James Jew. We get another picture that is freaking crazy. With Michael on the stairs. He has the butcher knife, which is the same 
you know, wallpaper that's been in a lot of these exclusive images. And it's kind of showing that, you know, um, this film is going to take a uh, place mostly, you know, in this house, you know, and that's kind of how 78 was towards the end. It was kind of the housey, a lot of house involved and stuff. I think they're going to kind of aim for that. No, like, hospital, no, you know, no streets. For it's going to be kind of like, you know, I had to the 78. We get more of the house and the back and forth battling, which is so cool. Hopefully, we get some more stalking, you guys. Um, and then we get a freaking awesome picture of Lori in the shape battling <coughs> in the kitchen. And they're battling in the kitchen. It looks like Lori either, it, I don't know, the, the image is crazy. Obviously, Michael's like, he's swiping at her or she's doing something to Michael. But what I thought was so cool, as you zoom in, man, you see Phelps Garage. Now, I don't know if a lot of you guys know, possibly, that um this it, Phelps Garage is from 78. This is that red uh that garage that truck you know that truck that red truck from 78 where Lomas is around that area and stuff like that so that's super cool that they kind of went that far just have that on the fridge in my opinion but um yeah you guys I just feel like a lot of you know stuff that's going on is going to be crazy um another thing I want to talk touch on before we end off is you know Allison you know I feel that you guys Allison's growing into being this final girl She's grown into being this final girl. She's has been since kills. She's a young Lori when you look at her. She's you know she's not Lori, but she has that young Lori vibe to her and stuff like that. Um, she's lost the most in you know this this franchise in my opinion. She's lost her dad, her mom, her lover, and her friends. And I feel like you know at the end, I'm not saying she's gonna take the last blow, but I guarantee you guys that Allison will take a blow at Michael that's gonna count. It's what I mean by that is going to injure him to the point it helps Lori out. Um, I've been, you know, talking about you guys. I thought that Lori was going to die. From the looks of it, it seemed like Lori's going to kind of, you know, maybe walk out on top. But the thing is, you guys, I wouldn't be surprised if Michael just wipes everybody clean. You know, uh, you know, the boogeyman, it, it, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy how, you know, the boogeyman has did what he's done in this trilogy. You know, if you think about it, he's done a lot of crazy stuff, but um, it's just crazy to think that, like, when you think about it, this is the end, you guys. This is possibly the end, you know, for Halloween and this trilogy. Uh, they're saying they're done with it and everything, but, you know, I'm ready to see who, you know, survives and everything. You know, I think personally that Lori's going to walk out on top because it just makes sense. I don't think they're gonna really end Halloween. Like I told you guys, I think it's gonna I think it's gonna end in a junkyard because just the moment when David Gordon Green had brought up Christine, I immediately thought Arnie Cunningham, Michael's the Plymouth Fury type of thing, and they're you, know, you saw how they took out the Plymouth Fury, man, and um Christine. They crushed him till he was nothing. I think the junkyard is gonna be like some stuff where you know how Lori and Karen had this like lifetime plan. I think Allison and Lori are going to have like this plan that they have in their back pocket Which is going to be one of those things where they have to be like, you know what? Let's get Michael to this junkyard because they have something going on in there that's plant just in case if he ever comes back you know and um I, I really do think that um, you know, Lori's gonna be very overprotective in this of Allison You know, especially with her date and Corey a guy who's accused of you know Killing someone he's babysitting after her just dealing with Michael, of course, she's going to be overprotective of Allison. And you know, she just lost Karen and stuff like that. But you know, I, I possibly we can get some flashbacks with Lori's memoir. I think hopefully they include some moments in there. Um, and I think you guys, to be honest, it kind of shows me now when Lori writes this memoir, it kind of shows me that possibly that Lori uh, is going to kind of get reminded of the shit he's took her through. And it's going to kind of put her back in that mode where she's like depressed. And I think that's how she's going to come about kind of being on a court and tracking them down. Because, you know, she's going to start peeping shit. Maybe, like I said, they're getting word that Michael's been spotted here and there. And she's like, you know, this is not how Michael moves. He usually has deaths behind his name. And, and I think that that's how she's going to be on a court. It's going to be something that alerts her to show her that this is not Michael. This is not what he does. And like I said, she's going to come across Corey and, um... I think that's what's going to happen, you guys. I po possibly getting a full trailer soon. But yeah, you all, comment down below what you guys think about all the pictures they've uh, released from um, Total Film. And, you know, with David Gordon Green saying that, you know, 
possibly we won't even know where Michael is for these four years. So that's kind of crazy. But um, yeah, you all. Unfortunately, this is the end of the video. Don't forget to hit me on social media. I like scary on Instagram. I like scary seventy seven on TikTok. Brandon on Facebook, and I like scary on Twitter. Don't forget, you guys become a member of Patreon, get exclusive content and benefits of the channel. Right there is where it says subscribe. Next to it, click join and become a member of the channel. Get a nice little cool badge next to your name. Be invited to private watch parties. Check out the official I like scary merch store. And yeah, you guys, watch some horror movies. Stay scary out there. I love you all. Peace.